Da na na na, da na na, da na na, da na 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 na, da na 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 na. It's Preds game day, and this is the Locked On Predators podcast. Your Locked On Predators, your daily podcast on the Nashville Predators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Predators your first listen of the day. Every single day, we are your Preds podcast that's free and available on all platforms, wherever you get your podcast. I'm Nick Morgan. I'm a writer and editor at OnTheForeCheck.com. And I have a partner in crime. You do. I am Ann Kimmel. I'm a writer and editor at InsideThePreds.com. We made it, Ann. Oh, my gosh. Hallelujah. We have made it to the regular season. Uh, Before we dive into the game preview, I want to mention today's show brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. Yeah. The uh, NHL regular season begins today. Uh, it is in Prague. That's yes. very different than the regular NHL. Preds playing in the NHL Global Series. They play the San Jose Sharks. They have games today and tomorrow. So a back-to-back doubleheader in Prague. Uh, puck drop for both those games is 1 p.m. Central today. So uh, if you got a few minutes to mosey out of work, If you got a reliable stream on your computer when your boss isn't looking, or you just like having good coverage on your phone, good day to uh, double check that and bust that out uh, because you have actual meaningful hockey for the first time since game four of the Stanley Cup playoffs, which we're not going to talk about. Mm -hmm. That was Um, not meaningful. (laughs) It was not meaningful. Not meaningful. Yeah, and... um, Lots, lots to get to today. You know, we got some yeah. lineup stuff. You and I have some keys to the game, things that we want to watch out for, um, mm-hmm. maybe preview for this entire series. But let's kind of start out with what the headline is, and that is what appears to be your opening night lineup. Not really what we expected it to be uh, from just two weeks ago. Um, yeah. yeah, but, you know, it, it is what it is. So here... Basically, the the headline is all of the lines are kind of set, except for the one big caveat. Uh, Kiefer Sherwood is your second line center, playing with Nita Ryder and Johansson. That part of it was no surprise, but Sherwood from two weeks ago maybe was. And on the bottom pair, you have Glass and Tomasino. That's good. Mm-hmm. Cole Smith is the other uh, forward on that line. Uh, and on defense, we have Mark Borvietsky and Dante Fabro starting on the bottom pair. Uh, yesterday in the practice lines, it was Jeremy Lazan and Dante Fabro. Willie Donick this morning um, in a video he posted with Pete Weber and Chris Mason said that it's going to be Mark Borvietsky taking his spot. Not sure if that's uh, – I didn't catch, and maybe you know, was it because of injury or was it just – Did not say. Or just Did something. not say. Just said that Borvietsky was in for morning skate with Dante Fabro. Interesting. And, of course, yeah. UC Saras in that. So uh, a couple of a couple of different ways you can look at that lineup, man. <laughs> Aren't there, though? Aren't and there? And I imagine Hockey Twitter will find every angle. Yeah, so I think – like you said, two weeks ago, this would be, I think, a pretty surprising lineup. Having looked at what's been going on with the lineups, not as surprising. Um, as, as far as, you know, I'm going to start with the little crumb first, and I'm going to say I think Borvietsky's in there not because of injury, but I just think that he is an energy guy. You've got, you know, opening game, you're playing in Prague, you want big energy, um, and... If you think, I mean, that's Mark Borowiecki in a lot of ways, I think, you know, and they're also, look, they're also playing like their time zones in here. I don't even know how they're functioning. So, you know, they're just playing in a different time zone. This is a game where they're going to need kind of extra emotional energy. So that's why I'm thinking Boros in there. But, you know, that's yeah. just my two cents. Let's talk about the Phil Tocasino 
elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. What's that about there, Nick? What What do you think this is about? What's going on here? We we discuss this a little bit off camera. Just you and I have bit. very differing opinions on this. We do. Look, we do. I think Kiefer Sherwood definitely earned his spot on mm -hmm. that second line. Okay. I think Cole Smith definitely earned his spot in camp too. We talked about it a lot. It seems like, cause we're like, it's funny with Cole Smith because we were talking with, you know, all these like different people like Zach Sanford, maybe has had a good camp and competing mm -hmm. and, you know, Michael McCarron still has a good camp and is competing. And then it seems like we always said, go, oh, it's like, Oh yeah. And Cole Smith, Cole Smith has looked really good too. Like yeah. it seems like we always forgot about Cole Smith, but you know, he was there having a good camp. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing about Tomasino. You and I debated. I personally don't think he had that strong of a preseason. You disagree with me. I disagree. Yeah, I, I do disagree with you um, here with a caveat. So, and you know, I just don't like to argue, but here's what I'm going to say. I don't think he performed as well in the games. And I think it was interesting after the first game where it was Nino Johansson and Tomasino. Um, Johansson was pretty, um, and, and he is always pretty blunt, but he was very clear about like not meeting expectations. Like this line did not meet expectations. Did we do some good things? Did we get a little juice as the game went on? Yes, but this line did not meet expectations. File that away because I wonder how important that is. I When I saw the three of them playing together like in the scrimmages in training camp, I really thought it was a good line. It's a different line. It's a line, and this is where I think the whole issue is. It's a line that doesn't necessarily have a very specific one, one word identity because Nino Niederreiter and Brian Johansson are – something and then you have phil tomasino and one of these things is not like the other phil tomasino is you know more more uh, less physical maybe a little bit more speed it, just a different hockey style so i'm wondering if that is sort of maybe the disconnect if this is more about line identity and less about tomasino performance because i don't feel like he had a craptastic training camp it, no like it, it wasn't like bad by any means yeah but i would say but like if you're ranking the players mm -hmm. who had like super impressive like camps yeah. like in terms of what they brought to the team like in terms of their skill set mm -hmm. like i was like i wouldn't put tomasino at the top i would put he for sure would ahead of him. Mm -hmm. I would put like some other players ahead of him. So I don't think it's that he necessarily bad. I just think there are other players that did a little bit better than him. And maybe, I think that they're. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 you know, you have this 27 man roster for these two games where you get an extra look at the guys, you know, it's at least telling your team, like, look, you know, we have this roster. We're not just going to keep you around just to send you to Milwaukee, just to have like some backup guys. Like, we're going to give you a chance if you earned it. And I think those two guys earned it. And I do want to, because I know you had a, a follow up, no, to that, but I do want to, but I do want to say something to the identity. That was mm -hmm. something that we talked about was John Hines likes mm -hmm. his lines to have like an identity. We talked about that the other day when yes. we were kind of making our roster predictions. We were like, mm -hmm. they like to play. He wants like the third line to play a certain way. He wants the second line to play a certain way in certain situations and so on and so forth. So, like maybe that was that was it. Like he thought that second line with Phil Tomasino was a little too pretty. I, I don't know. Like I don't yeah. know. And I'm sure John Hines is going to be asked. And the other caveat at Ann is mm -hmm. that this is two games, back to back games with a 27 man roster. Mm -hmm. I strongly doubt we're gonna see the exact same lineup in back to back games. We might. We might because they are two regular season games, but I have a feeling that you're gonna maybe see of at least you know two three different faces mm -hmm. from this game to um tomorrow's game yeah and i wondered about that too are they kind of treating these and this is no disrespect to san jose and to our good friend jd young but are they kind of treating these two regular season games against a team that is not predicted to do super well which let's just take a minute and talk about arizona four goal lead but aside from that um you know, are they kind of using these as as sort of a last 
chance to kind of try out some different rosters. So I think that may be a factor. What I was going to say when you were talking about training camp, I do agree with you. When I look back at training camp, the players that stood out to me that really surprised me was Kiefer Sherwood. Um, he really was. And Cole Smith, again, he's kind of like the ampersand guy, like so-and-so had a good camp and so-and-so. Oh, and Cole Smith, but he really had a good camp. I'm just surprised um, because Phil Tomasino did, did not have a bad camp. I'm surprised that his performance last season didn't doesn't seem to carry as much weight this season. And I can't tell if I'm down with that or if I'm wary of that. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you have this young phenom who matured over the course of a season, who has offensive punch, who can read the game really quickly. And you know that in NHL time. And look, I'm not one of those that's like, oh, you don't get rid of an NHLer for an AHLer. I've seen that take. Don't come at me. AHLers are NHLers in the waiting. So don't come at me. Um, so I get that. But I'm just surprised that his last season and his skill set doesn't has not carried as much weight. Well, especially because he got better as the season yeah. last year. Yeah. Um, I thought when he played, he looked like one of the more dangerous Preds in that Colorado series. But remember what happened, he wound up getting scratched in that series too. Yeah. So, you know, there, there maybe is, you know, something about that game that John Hines just doesn't think is, is ready mm-hmm. or that it, it's not, you know, maybe he looks at somebody like Cole Smith and it's like, you know what? Like I need somebody to do this, you know. If he if they're going to be out there, they need to do this, you know. Cole Smith, he's not a you know a five star prospect like Phil Tomasino is, but he does this a little bit better right now, and because he does this a little bit better, maybe gives me a better chance to win. Phil Tomasino yeah. is going to be in the lineup this year, and he's going to play yeah. a lot of games. Like let's not get that twisted. Um, yeah. I just think like right now, like you know he he's coming off a camp and where he looked like you know average. Um, I, and I also think that there are some other players that played better. And I think mm-hmm. at the end of the day, that's, I think, just kind of it. Like, I mm-hmm. don't think this needs to be like a whole indictment of John Hines. I don't. Oh, think but it will be, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> By the time it hits Twitter. Look, I, I don't I don't think this is like mm-hmm. as big of a deal as yeah. I think certain people are going to make it out to be. I think this is. Game one, you have a couple of players that were really hot in preseason. You Mm want to get them some game action while you have a 27 man roster. Yeah. That's it. I, I I think that, I think that is as simple as the Phil Tomasino situation is. Um, Let's hope so. Yeah. Let's hope so. Uh, More from this game coming up, including a look at the San Jose Sharks and one big thing. Uh, that we want to see from the Nashville Predators today. Come up in just a second, but first brought to you, uh, or (laughs) I mentioned today's show is brought to you, that was a complete sentence, by our friends at BetOnline, BetOnline BetOnline.net, your number one source for betting this hockey season. You can find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth articles and analysis on every game you can find. As always, BetOnline remains your continued source for all of your sports wagering information with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there. How many goals is Philip Forsberg going to score this year? Who's going to score the first goal today? Are the Preds going to uh, hit the over/under on their uh, on their uh, game today? Those are all things you can bet on if you go to bet online. And it's not just hockey either. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your favorite games and events. Everything from pro and college football, MLB playoffs starting up. MMA, boxing, golf, soccer, whatever you want, Bet Online has it. So head there today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. That is betonline.net, where the game starts. All right, Ann. So we've looked at the Nashville Predators for a little bit. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's look at the San Jose Sharks. Uh, we talked about this with, with JD a little bit. Uh, they have some familiar faces on the, the other side. Look, oh, we, we talked about the sharks are not going to be great this year mm-hmm. though we mm-hmm. think um but look don't get comfortable still, people <laughs> there's still 
you know, some dangerous players on that team. Logan Couture, mm -hmm. uh, Thomas Hurdle, who is on top of his game right now. Timo Meyer, yes. one of the more underrated players in the NHL next to Tomas Hurdle. If they were on mm -hmm. any other team uh, right now, they would probably be front and center among the discussion of some of the best players in the NHL. So the Preds really have to be careful here because there is a lot to like about the mm -hmm. San Jose Sharks lineup, especially up front. Yeah, I agree with you. And here's the thing you see, you know, hey, they're playing the San Jose Sharks for the first two games, and that's not a team that's allegedly going to be dangerous. That is not a mental game that the Nashville Predators can play. And we've seen it. So you have to go into this game understanding these are two points that count. And if we learned anything from last season, it's that when you have windows of getting two points in easy games you don't leave it on the ice you've got to get them so this is a game that Nashville has to take seriously and like you said San Jose they have pieces that are something you know mm. this is this is not um this is not a team that you can just sort of say oh this is we've got this this is easy so I think the Predators have to be serious, have to be focused, have to bring their regular season game tempo speed to it. Not like you said, I agree with like Timo Meyer. This is a player who anywhere else would probably have a little bit more zhuzh behind his name and, and watching him, but you know, they've got some weapons and here's what is real, Nick. They have Luke Cunning, and let's talk about what that means. That means that Luke Cunning is going to score 25 goals this season and he's going to flourish and he's going to live his best life. And he's going to want to start doing that against the Nashville Predators. I so mean, I'm just he, saying. So we talked about this with JD, you know, normally the Preds go to the Minnesota wild right. and then become 30 goal scorers. Mm -hmm. Uh, Cunning came from the Minnesota Wild. So mm -hmm. does he go somewhere else after this and get worse? Or is it still because the Wild is attached to his name somewhere that, that he's going to come out and have like the breakout season of all breakout seasons? Yeah. I just think we have to batten down the hatches and prepare for the worst. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> because it's just painful. <laughs> it for what painful. it's worth, he's still skating on the top line. I know. Like we, we thought like JD thought he was going to kind of get bumped down to mm -hmm. like the third line or something like that, but he's still up there. He's still skating with that top line. So and he's going to be saying some things Yeah, about that. Yeah. Look, he's combination be of Tomas Hurdle, Timo Meyer, and Luke Cunning. There, I where is a trio for you? I would be good on that line. So, you know, simmer down Luke Cunning, but I do. I'm telling you, I know there's a lot of other players to be watching, but I'm going to be panic watching Luke Cunning this whole time. Anytime he has the puck, I'm going to be like, yep, he's going to score a goal. Just yeah. because that's that's the level of my Predators dread. <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, yeah. you know, they, they got a couple of other under the radar players too. Um, you know, one guy that I'm really kind of watching out for, especially on the four core, Oscar Lindblom. Uh, yeah. we, he was a free agent from um, Philadelphia. We know his story. Um, promising young prospect missed some time with cancer for a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. And you can tell, like, maybe last year, that was his first full year back, maybe he was still trying to get his legs under him a little bit, was still kind of, you know, in, in recovery mode, trying to get back 100% of yeah. his strength. You know, this year he goes to San Jose kind of as a clean slate. Um, you know, he's another guy that I'm watching maybe as kind of a underrated dare I say, breakout player uh, in mm -hmm. the Pacific Division this year. Um, I think he's somebody that's going to wind up having, you know, kind of a surprising run with the Shark. Yeah. yeah. And defensively for the Sharks, bless. Um, you know, they <laughs> – bless. Yeah. We love you, J.D. You know, Eric Carlson, he's he's playing for the Sharks. They have Matt Benning, who is – Nicest on... thing you can say about Eric Carlson's game in 2022 – Yes, he is on he the is, roster. He's on the roster for the Sharks. Um, they have Matt Benning, former Nashville Predator Matt Benning. Matt Benning has been on the third pairing in the preseason. So I expect we'll see him on that pairing as well. So they have and, defensemen. And on the power play. And on the – take a minute, folks. Yeah. Just take a minute. Is that something that you ever in a million years would have imagined – 
saying when he was here in Nashville. I I th I have made my thoughts on Matt Benning very clear. I liked Matt Benning. I really I did not Matt think he was Benning. horrible. Yeah. No, I liked Matt Benning. Yeah. I thought he actually played pretty, mm -hmm. pretty good. Yeah. But I think the Predators definitely improved their third line pairing. No offense, Matt Benning. I mean, I think that the Predators got better on defense, and I don't think that's because Matt Benning was a hot mess, but we'll just well, leave that there. Just you're what, you're going to see, I guarantee you, you're going to see a power play goal. Uh, Matt Benning assists to Luke Cunning at some point now. What's going to happen is you're going to have a Benning power play goal, and you're going to have a Cunning hat trick. You're, I'm you're, not even yeah. speaking it into the hockey universe. You just Don't you just me. did. Nah. You can't speak it and then say I'm not speaking I'm that not into speaking the hockey verse. It. It's just... early. The hockey universe isn't even up yet. So yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, defensively, yeah. San Jose is kind of a mess. You know, Carlson mm -hmm. and Flossick, you know, unfortunately not the players they were, yeah. you know, six, seven years ago. Um, but two of the best, you know, defenders, defensemen. In, in their in generation, their yeah. um, but just, you know, simply past their prime. And there's just, there's just not enough depth, especially with Marcus Nudevara, who's probably their, I guess their next tier of best defensemen. He's mm -hmm. out with injury. He's not going to play. Um, and, you know, there's just. It's I mean, a lot Scott to overcome. Harrington, maybe there, there's just, there's just not anybody there that you look at and say, it's like, that's a, that's somebody that the Sharks can build around. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, in goal, that's kind of the wild card because James yes. Weimer last year had quietly one of the best seasons uh, of his, you know, career in the past yeah. few years. But San Jose, very respectable season, kept the Sharks in a lot of games. Um, I presume he's probably going to get the start today. Actually, he is going to get the start today. I presume Kapo Kakanen is probably going to get the start tomorrow. Yeah. Um, that's another interesting one. Of course, he came over um, from the Minnesota Wild. Um, he kind of a dump away when they got uh, Mark Andre Fleury yeah. in that trade. So, and then that's yeah. all been a whole thing. Bless that has Minnesota. been a whole thing. Um, not as good when he went to San Jose at the end of last year. Mm -hmm. So, you know, some some question marks certainly on that back end of the Sharks. You know, as as you know, surprisingly decent as I could be at Ford, there is a lot of holes on that back end. They can be a team that you know, you know, unfortunately gives up three four goals mm -hmm. a night pretty consistently. Uh, so you know, for the Preds, if you're somebody like Philip Forsberg, mm -hmm. you know. Matt Duchesne trying to get your offense going. This seems to be a matchup you look at and be like, yeah, I'm looking my chops at this. Yeah, there's there's blood in the water. There is for sure. Yeah. So there are some things that Nick and I both think that the Nashville Predators need to do. Some things that we're going to be looking for keys to the game coming up in today's regular season opener. How exciting is that? We're going to talk about those in just a minute. But want to let you know, with the regular season starting, no matter how many times the NHL tries to tell you that it doesn't start yet, it does. It starts today. There's going to be lots of games going on, lots of game action going on. And if you want to keep up with what is happening in your team's division, in your team's conference, or across the league, you need to check out Locked On NHL. Locked On NHL is a 30-minute daily podcast bringing experts from across the league together to talk about what is happening with their teams, with their players, and what the big storylines are in the league. You can find Locked On NHL anywhere you you find your favorite podcast locked on NHL. It is your daily 30 minute hockey podcast. All right. And so we've covered the sharks a little bit. We mm -hmm. talked about Fred's lineup. Let's get into brass tack. Shall we? We shall. What's, what's one big thing that you are going to be watching for today that you think may be indicative of the Pred success this weekend? Well, I hate to just jump right to the obvious, but here's where I'm going with it. I'm going with the second line of Nina Ryder, Johansson, and Sherwood. Look, don't need to say it. You know how I feel about Kiefer Sherwood's preseason. It's been phenomenal, just phenomenal. This young man has taken his chance, and he has played so well, and I think he's a natural fit for the Predators' identity style. I really think he is um, very similar in style, in read, in speed with Nina Ryder and Johansson. So 
And on all eyes, let's face it, all eyes are going to be on that second line. That's going to be the big thing that people are watching. And I agree with that. I think this is a line that could produce really fun, interesting offensive chances. But I also think this is going to be a line that's going to showcase as much as last season the herd line did. This is a line that's going to showcase National Predators identity hockey as well. So I'm going to be watching them not just offensively for what can they generate, what can they create, but also what are they doing in the 200 foot game? How are, you know, how are they checking? How are they playing? What are they doing through the neutral zone? How are they transitioning in and out? So for me, my, the first thing I'll be watching, of course, is that second line. How about you? What are you going to be watching for? Well, you know, if, if we're talking about individual players and stuff, mm -hmm. I look at that fourth line and mm -hmm. I look at the comp specifically Cody Glass and Ellie Tolvin. And that is a combination that really kind of worked last year when they were mm -hmm. together. Um, as brief as that was, and that's a combination that John Hines is really committed to this offseason. They have skated a lot of time together, played the last few preseasons together. So I'm looking for that combo because if that is a pair uh, that can get going, those are two guys that complement each other's mm -hmm. games very well. At the end of the day, though, and the big thing that I want to see from the Nashville Predators is, did you address your undoings last season? And a big thing is, discipline Yo. Like, i want to see some improvement when it comes to discipline this was the predators absolute achilles heel last year mm -hmm. we talked about it a lot i feel like a i'm about lot. to sneeze but i <laughs> guess that's going away like we talked about this a lot you know there's a lot of penalties that probably could have been avoided you know, oh, there's yeah. a lot of, you know, just reckless sticks and stuff like that. You know, you have, we, we talked about penalties and tears. Like one, like, are you trying to make a close hockey play, you know, battle along the boards? Are you trying to break up a good scoring chance? And mm -hmm. does your stick get in the way, trip somebody? Like that's a fine penalty. Right. There's those other penalties where you're just like wildly throwing your stick out there on like a, a two on three to try to poke check the puck away and you wind up tripping a person. That is avoidable penalty. Mm -hmm. And then finally, the dumb stuff. The stuff that the Predators uh. really like had to wring their hands about last year. And that mm -hmm. is just, you know, the battles in front of the net. One guy gives you a stick, so you turn around and give him a two-hand chop across the back. Or after the whistle, somebody bumps you, so you just like Wail on him. face wash him or something like that. Mm -hmm. That absolutely killed the Predators last year. Most mm -hmm. penalized team in the NHL. For the first couple of minutes, or first couple of games, I should say, I guess minutes of the game counts, I want to see improvement in that regard. Yes. I want to see the Predators play cleaner uh, because that, to me, if that is something that, you know, John Hines has kind of said, like, oh, you know, you know, we want to play, we want our guys to play, like, kind of on the edge without crossing. So if they start, you know, crossing over that edge early this season, I'm mm -hmm. going to look at as a coaching failure to not address that in camp. Yeah, and I think there have been a couple times in some of the preseason games where you have still seen those, like, seriously, y'all, penalties. Not all of them, but I, I'm hoping, like with like what you said, I'm hoping that they're in a process of addressing it and cleaning it up because that, I think, is one thing that while you can excuse it for style of play, you cannot win with it. Yeah. Um, and the Predators saw that. So uh, I'm also keeping an eye on some special teams thing. For me specifically, it is the second power playing unit because ladies and gentlemen, Tanner Janot could be in front of the net. And this is revolutionary and brilliant. He got some time in the, on that second power playing unit in the preseason. And I'm like, where have you been all our lives? And can you just camp there? Because Tanner Janot, first of all, big body, can't see around him. Doesn't matter how hard you try. But also he really has done a great job with tipping the puck in, kind of anticipating what's coming next there. So for me, all of a sudden, Nashville doesn't have one power play unit and then five guys that come on the ice for a minute. They could actually have two power play units and I'm loving Tanner Janot in front of the net. So for me, when it comes to special teams on top of like, stay out of the sin bin. Also, I'm really interested to see, okay, if you get the man advantage, are the predators going to be able to take better advantage of that this season? And I'm telling you with, if Tanner Janot is in front of the net, I am here for this. I'm all over it. Like flies on stink. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. 
big it's, one for me. It's going to be interesting. You need to find that. You need to get that second power play unit going. Yes. Uh, yeah. You absolutely should. And you hope the addition of Nito Nito Rider uh, addresses mm -hmm. some of that as well. Um, you know, Alexander Carey out there. Matias Eckholm may also get yeah. some power play time. Um, he's somebody that I think may be underrated from an offensive perspective this year, just because I think Ryan McDonough is going to let him loosen up a little bit more mm -hmm. offensively, you know, not have to worry about being that anchor. So I think maybe that is something to watch too in terms of maybe a player having a breakout season. A um, lot to like, a lot to like about this Predators team. Mm -hmm. Let's see if there is a lot to love this weekend. So uh, two games this weekend today, mm -hmm. one o'clock in Prague tomorrow, one o'clock in Prague. Uh, and we'll be back next week to break that down. I'm yeah. off cause I got stuff to do, uh, yeah, but we will be back to recap that next week uh been told and also has a couple of guests lined up so i do yes so yeah. it's gonna be great but we are definitely monday we're gonna come back we're gonna hit the ground running we're gonna do plus minus we're gonna do game breakdown we're gonna do game recap and we're gonna hit the ground running folks because it's regular season we got stuff to do we do. There is no nonsense from here on out. Uh, and hey, re reminder, if you want to be uh, be the first to know when we have a new episode, be sure you subscribe to our podcast wherever you're listening. Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, anything, you know, name a podcast platform. Chances are we're probably on it. Be sure to hit subscribe. Uh, and also, if you're watching this on YouTube, the Locked on Predators YouTube channel, uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button as well and hit the bell notification. That way you will be alerted when we have new episodes out. Uh, and where can the people find your work? You can find my work online at InsideThePreds.com. And you can always find me on Twitter at ANK underscore Mama on Ice. And you can find my work at ontheforecheck.com. That's going to do it for us on today's Locked on Predators podcast. We're glad it's game day, folks. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for making us your first listen today. We'll see you Monday with a recap of NHL's Global Series. See you then.